if you are using this type of meta ad campaign to promote your music on Spotify, then you are wasting your money. Today, I'm gonna to show you real data that I collected as part of an experiment to compare conversion campaigns with traffic campaigns to help you decide which is the meta ad campaign you should run for promoting your music. What's up everyone, my name is Kyle. I run a music consulting service called Kyle the Ally, where I use digital marketing tools such as meta ads to help artists promote their music on Spotify. If you're new to this channel, hello and welcome. But if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I like two things. The first is that I typically recommend using what's called a conversion campaign if you're gonna use meta ads to promote your music on Spotify. And the second is that I love real data and experiments to prove a point. And I think there's really no substitute for that. So even though I've traditionally recommended conversion campaigns for your ads, uh, some time ago, some people on the internet suggested that a different type of campaign called a traffic campaign, uh, which you could also build on meta ads, is the thing that you should be using over conversion campaigns. Now, when I saw these claims come out, frankly, they made me a little bit cranky because all of the tests that I saw of comparing conversion to traffic campaigns um, weren't in my eyes very rigorous or conclusive. Um, there wasn't anything like a separation of variables, any real data collected. Uh, they basically couldn't prove that any kind of difference they were seeing was really due to changing the type of campaign that they were using. So today's video is really going to solve that problem once and for all. I'm going to run a real experiment to check something that I've been assuming for a couple of years, which is that conversions are the way to go. And I'm going to compare it against a campaign type that people commonly pitch as an alternative to conversions. And we're going to see with real data, which is the one that's going to come out on top. I want to walk you through a quick crash course of what the two different campaign types look like before I dive into the details of the experiment, just in case you're not familiar. So the first type that I'm looking at is the conversion campaign. That's the conventional campaign that I recommend to everybody. The way that works is your prospective audience will see an ad on Instagram or Facebook. It'll look something like this. This is actually the exact ad I used for the experiment. And when somebody clicks on this ad on Instagram, it's going to bring them to what's called a landing page, or some people call this a smart link, uh, some kind of third party website where you host all of the additional links for your streaming services. In this case, I just have Spotify on there. Um, in my case, I use Hyped It. Um, I've actually run another experiment, which explains why I like Hyped It over the others. So you can go check that out here. Um, but the important part of using a landing page like this is that you can embed the meta pixel into this landing page, which tracks data about the users who are interacting with the website. So when somebody goes to click on a button to go to Spotify, as you might expect, it'll bring them to the song, but behind the scenes, the pixel has collected data on what type of listener has successfully interacted with our ad. It sees you know, what people are viewing the landing page, what people are clicking the landing page to complete the action. Um, and it's this data tracking that actually ends up being really important. In comparison, the second type of campaign that I'm running for this experiment, which is called a traffic campaign, like that's what the objective is actually called in meta ads. Um, when somebody clicks on this ad, it brings them directly to Spotify. There's no middle step in between with a landing page. And on first guess, you might think that the traffic campaign should perform better because there's less intermediate steps to go from ad to Spotify. Um, but we're gonna see later that that's not the case. My hypothesis going into this experiment, if we wanna use the scientific fancy word, is that the intermediate step of collecting data on your listeners that you get with the conversion campaign is really critical for guaranteeing the quality of the listener that you get when you bring them from the ad to Spotify. Uh, and that's why I traditionally have recommended conversion campaigns. And so the point of this experiment was to put that to the test to see if really we can get a better quality of listener over what you get with just a traffic campaign, which is just shooting blindly people over from Instagram to Spotify. I used one of my own songs called Corporate Advertainment as the subject for this experiment. And for any experiment to be valid, you have to make sure that you're using all of the same advertising material and the same song for both of the groups that you're trying to test. But if you've ever released on Spotify, 
you know that we actually end up with a conundrum and that's because you can't release the same song twice um, what you could do is you could run both campaigns sequentially where you run campaign a stop it then run campaign b and then look at the difference over time but that's technically not a proper way to run an experiment because you're gonna have a hard time even if you do that you're gonna have a hard time proving that the change that you made really made a difference and it's not due to some other difference that happened over that time so we need another way to collect data and my solution to this problem is to make a one song playlist for each of the campaigns that I wanted to test. So I made a playlist called Corporate Advertainment just containing the one song for group A and I labeled it A and I did the same thing for group B. And that's how I can get an extra layer to collect data off of because I can then look at each of these playlists and see the number of likes that each playlist is getting. Um, and likes are an important engagement metric um, that you get off of these campaigns. Because um, if you didn't know, when Spotify releases your single, it basically just shows up as a playlist with one song in it. So I've ex effectively made a dummy version of that for the purpose of my experiment. And then I have something to use to collect data off of. So that way, the metric that I'm using to determine success in this experiment is how many saves each of these playlists gets after we run the experiment for two weeks. Because saves is an important engagement metric that we get off of um, a song promotion. I would have also liked to collect information on listeners and streams, which I've done in the past. And you'll see if you watch my other past experiment video. Um, but Spotify for Artists actually did an update where you can't really get the listeners and streams off of a playlist this small anymore, which is kind of a bummer, but still, I believe that saves is the best metric for determining the winner of this experiment. And so that's what I stuck with for this. And before I get too carried away in explaining the results of the experiment, I wanna walk you through how my campaigns were set up. So as you could probably guess, I had two campaigns. Uh, campaign A was the conversion campaign, which is the conventional type of campaign that I've historically recommended. And campaign B is the traffic campaign. And just about everything was identical for these two campaigns. So I ran each of them at $5 a day for two weeks. So each one spent $70 in total. Um, and of course the key difference between each of them, the independent variable was the type of campaign objective that I chose. And what I mean by campaign objective is if you click create, um, it'll ask you to choose one of you know, different objectives. The traffic campaign, obviously I chose the traffic objective. For the conversion campaign, I choose the sales objective, which is just what they call conversion campaigns right now. You could actually see they list conversions as an option under the sales blanket, whatever. Um, so I'll crack open this so you can kind of see how this is set up. Um, so the conversion campaign, of course, used um, a Metapixel for tracking events, uh, spent $5 a day. Each of them had the same audience with, you know, a global-ish list of countries, wide age range, um, people who like Spotify and pop punk. Um, and they both used the same ad, which came from my music video for corporate advertisement. Um, and again, the key difference is the objective. So if you clicked on the conversion campaign, it would bring you first to this landing page, then you click on this link to go to Spotify. However, if we look at the traffic campaign, um, I'll go ahead and open that one up. Again, use the same audience, the same placements, the same video ad, but the website URL, instead of being the URL for the hyped it landing page, was just a URL that would bring you directly to Spotify. And because this is campaign B, this brings you to playlist B, whereas you saw that um, the conversion campaign brings you to playlist A. One more critical detail regarding the setup is that I used Meta's built-in A-B test feature when I was running both of these uh, campaigns at the same exact time. And that's why you see this little like, uh, I don't know if this is like a, like a test tube or beaker. That logo lets you know that both of these participated in the A-B test. And you could do that by selecting your two campaigns and then the button's grayed out here, but if they weren't already, you could select A-B test and set it up. Um, the reason why this is important is not because I care about any of the reports that Meta gives me at the end of the experiment, because um, they're not gonna be as detailed as the data that I collect, but what the A-B test feature does is at least Meta is going to make sure that your two campaigns aren't going to compete against each other for the exact same audience members. Because um, if you didn't know, all of your ads are 
your ad impressions are bought at auction. So if more people are trying to advertise for the same audience, the impression cost goes up. So enabling this A-B test feature, make sure that your ads are not competing against each other for the same exact audience member and driving artificial competition and artificially driving your cost up. So that's kind of a, a subtle, but I feel like important um, part of the setup to make sure that these two campaigns aren't smothering each other when they're running together at the same time. And before I jump into the results of my experiment, I just want to take a moment to talk about what I do. As I mentioned earlier, I started Kyle the Ally, which is a marketing consulting service, which is geared towards helping artists like you use digital marketing tools like meta ads, Google ads, whatever, to promote your music on Spotify. I've been doing this professionally for over three years now, and I've had a lot of fun and a lot of success uh, working with artists to help them release their music and get it heard. So if you're interested in finding out more about how we can work together, I encourage you to go to my website, kyletheally.com. The link will be down below. Go to the contact me form on my website and fill that out to give me a little bit of information about yourself. And if working together looks like a good fit, I'll send you an email with next steps. Thanks and I hope I get the opportunity to work with some of you guys. And now we get to talk about the part that you've been waiting for, which is the results of the experiment. And because I'm a huge nerd, of course, I made a giant spreadsheet um, that was needlessly complicated to track all of my results. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but I'll walk you through basically what I did here. Uh, so there's a couple different tabs. So I have a tab for group A, which remember was our conversion campaign. Um, I ran this experiment from January 2nd, 2024 up until the 15th. So that was exactly two weeks. And every day I was tracking the amount that was spent on that day, the amount of results, which for the conversion campaign is number of conversions, the amount of link clicks, which is literally the number of people who are clicking on the ad. Um, and then it doesn't really care about what happens after. And then the all important metric is the number of saves that that corresponding playlist was getting. And I track all of those day by day. And like I said, I really would have liked to have listener and stream data. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get that because Spotify for artists I don't know, it doesn't give you that anymore for small playlists. Um, but I still hold that saves are the most important success metric for this experiment because something like streams is mainly due to list individual listeners listening habits anyway. So streams wouldn't have been so accurate. So I really trust saves as the be all end all decider of performance. And I did that for group A. I also did, did that for group B, which is the traffic campaign tracking spends. In this case, the result was the number of link clicks, which is why all of these numbers are equal because the traffic campaign only cares about that first click when somebody sees the ad on Instagram, they click and then they just get sent straight to Spotify. There's no other intermediate steps. Um, and I also <laughs> tracked the number of saves for this one. So you've seen the result kind of teased already, but I'll go back to the summary sheet to show you that um, if you're using a traffic campaign, you are throwing away your money. And that is just so obvious when you run an experiment like this. Um, at the end of two weeks, my conversion campaign got 37 saves on its playlist and the traffic campaign got two, only two. Um, and I, I couldn't make up a result that was, you know, more clear. Like this is just a, a crystal clear difference in the engagement that you get from the type of listener that's driven by a conversion campaign versus a traffic campaign. You can spend the same exact amount of money for two weeks and get two completely different results. And quite frankly, I was shocked that the difference was even this big. Um, and this is actually going to go back to my hypothesis, which is, you know, what I was saying before that I think having that extra step in the middle where the pixel is tracking data about your listeners um, in the conversion campaign is so critical for guaranteeing a certain level of quality in, of your listener. And I think that's why we see such a dramatic difference in the type of listener engagement that we get from a conversion campaign versus a traffic campaign. And even though we didn't have listener data or stream data, I think that we would see a similar story if we were able to see those pieces of information alongside the saves. Um, and so, you know, on the right here, we also have some graphs that tell you basically um, how the results accumulated per day. Um, the results in the case of the conversion campaign, which is the blue line, is just the number of conversions, and the red is uh, the traffic campaign, which is just link clicks. Um, you know, this graph is not that important. Really what we care about is the playlist saves, which is the second graph. Um, and again, it's just showing you how these 
playlist got to 37 and 2 saves respectively over the course of their lifetime. We see the conversion campaign had pretty steady growth except for like one day where it for some reason went backwards and the traffic campaign was like you know, barely a trickle. It was basically just getting one isolated save on day five and then one on like the last day and you ended up with two in total. So traffic campaign performance total garbage don't even think about it um, and then this last section here is a statistical analysis um, which was important for the video that i did comparing the different landing pages because the results were kind of close but with something like this i mean you don't need a confidence interval to tell you that the difference between 37 and 2 is statistically significant after you've got 14 data points um, but i just showed it here because it was already part of my spreadsheet template um, so we can definitely be at least 95 percent confident that if we repeat this experiment again we're going to see a similar result that puts the conversion campaign as the true winner when it comes to engagement so there you have it guys those are the results of my experiment but if you could leave this video with one lesson any main takeaway at all um, I hope it is that you guys don't just blindly trust things that people on the internet tell you. And I say this with full acknowledgement of the irony that I'm a stranger on the internet telling you things. Um, that is, I encourage you guys to always test things for yourself and always question the things that you see out there. That was really the spirit of this experiment and the spirit of what I'm trying to do with Kyle the Ally. Um, that is, not just take things as face value assumptions, even if you hear it from someone that you trust, challenge the things that you've been assuming for a long time and put them to the test and see if they stand up to real data. Can you back it up with numbers to see that the thing that you've always thought is actually true? Uh, that was the spirit of what I was doing today. Anyway, I hope that you learned something from today's video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe so you can stick around for more content like this. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Later.